Hello, friends. A big loving welcome to our very own channel, Ammu and You. Where I, Ammu, is again ready with another story to narrate to you. The story today that I have is a very sensitive story written by the illustrious Minal Pandey. And the name of the story is Girls. This story, as told by an eight-year-old girl, highlights how Indian society often takes its women for granted and how women are conditioned to accept a secondary role in the family. Happily, she refuses to accept her traditional role without protesting when and where she can. This is a touching story of the slowly changing gender attitudes and is of great relevance in today's India. We are all a part of this change. So, Girls by Minal Pandey. The day we left with Ma for Nani's house, Babu broke a surahi. I don't know whether he did it on purpose or by accident. But anyway, the floor was flooded with water. Ma held up her sari and called Saru's mother, who was trying to eavesdrop from the adjacent room, to mop up the water, because if someone were to slip and break the bones, it would be yet another problem. To Ma, everything in life was a problem. As far as she was concerned, whether we were at home or at school, ill or just playing around, we were a problem. While mopping the floor, Saru's mother looked up at Ma and asked, this time you'll be away for at least three months, won't you? Ma squatted down and said, yes, they won't allow me to come back sooner. She turned to me and ordered me to go out and play. I always seem to turn up at the wrong time and at the wrong place, she said. She was really, really all the time annoyed with me. I overheard Ma addressing Saru's mother or the cobwebs hanging from the roof, God knows who. I hope it's a boy this time. It will relieve me of the nuisance of going through another pregnancy. I could just imagine Saru's mother in her usual manner, shaking her head and saying, why not, why not? When we reached the station, I scrambled onto the train, fought my way through people and luggage and secured a place next to the window. Triumphantly, I stuck my tongue out at everyone and went, ee. but when I noticed Ma's gaze turning towards me, I immediately started chanting the alphabet, E for Imli, E for E. <laughs> Ma was actually not looking at me though, because she was preoccupied with all her problems. She had to mind the luggage, the wobbling surahi, the three of us, and cope with the exhaustion of pregnancy as well. At one of the stations, we bought a lot of samosas filled with chilies. Just when we were buying them, a woman was making her child urinate through the next window. The sight made me feel quite nauseous and I couldn't eat my samosa. So I gave it to Ma instead. Meanwhile, I crushed a piece of potato while I found it lying on the seat into the shape of an insect to frighten my younger sister. She screamed, Ma, who smacked me. And I started to cry as well. My elder sister was irritated and said, Oh, what a nuisance you are. Despite her irritation, I knew that it was only my elder sister who really loved me. Everyone else was horrible. Mama was waiting to receive us at the station. 
on the way to Nani's, I sat next to mommy and noticed the rubies in her earlobes bobbing up and down while she chewed pan. Every time the driver pressed the Jeep's horn, my sisters and I would scream in unison, poo poo, poo poo. Now, if I thought of Babu, because whenever we came to Nani's house, he never accompanied us. And as soon as we arrived, Ma would be lost in the company of Masis, Mamis, Nani, and old maid servants. If you tried going near her during the day, someone or the other would say, let the poor thing have some rest at least while she's here. Ma, too, would put on a pathetic act as if we always harassed her at home. I felt disgusted at the thought of entering Nani's house. So I deliberately loitered near the bushes. A mongrel dog came near and sniffed at me. Then I heard someone mentioning my name inside the house and saying, now where has she disappeared? I entered the house along with the dog and saw Nani sitting with Mama's son on her lap. As soon as she saw the dog, she shooed it away because to her, all animals were untouchables. The dog, used to being reprimanded, tucked its tail between his legs and went out. I was told to bend down and touch Nani's feet. Someone from the family said, not like that, bend properly. You are born a girl and you will have to bend for the rest of your life. So you might as well learn. Nani blessed me by waving her hand over my bowed head and said, this girl hasn't grown taller. Who would believe she's eight years old? Oh, what a nuisance this. Ma kept complaining. The old lady from the neighborhood who had come to see Ma told Nani, this time Lali will definitely have a boy. Just look at her complexion. When she was expecting the girls, it was pink, but now it has a tinge of yellow. I'm sure it will be a boy this time. Nani folded her hands and prayed. Oh, goddess, protect my honor. At least this time, let her take a son back from her parents' home. At the end of her prayer, she dried her tears with her pallu. From the corner of my eyes, I could see that my sisters were fast asleep. All the lights had been switched off and the room was flooded with moonlight. Tulsa Dai was applying oil to the soles of Ma's feet and saying, if it's a boy this time, I will demand a sari with stainless steel zari. If I have a boy this time, then I will be relieved of this burden forever, she tells Tulsa Dai. And then adds, you can go home now. Your children must be waiting for you. Be sure you put the oil vessel under the bed. Otherwise, one of these kids will kick it over in the morning. Ah! a bad omen. Whenever Ma left a sentence unfinished, it seemed to loom in the air like the ticking of the clock. I wonder why grown-ups always complete their sentences when they are talking about pleasant things, but always leave them unfinished if it is something unpleasant, like, ah, a woman's fate. Or, oh, three girls. There's always a silence after these half statements. There's a bright star in the sky. Is that the Dhruva star? Babu used to say that if I worked hard, I could become anything I wanted, just as Dhruva became a star. But I can't become a boy, can I? I once asked obstinately. I was surprised at Babu's reaction when he put on a serious look and said sternly, don't argue with your elders now. I find it difficult to understand them. My elder sister says one should never trust grown-ups because if they want to know something, they will prize it out of you by hook or by crook. But they themselves will never tell you 
anything that you need to know. It's true. Nobody ever tells us anything. In this place, it's when we go to sleep that the world of the elders awakens, opening like a magic casket. I want to stay awake and listen. I don't know why I fall asleep halfway through. I wonder whose voice it is now. It seems as if someone is crying in suppressed tones. Is it Chuti Masi? I don't get as much respect as a dog does in that house, she tells me. I wonder where she is treated worse than a dog. Then I hear Ma telling her, all of us suffer like that. One just has to endure it. My eyes shut and I fall asleep. What talks these, I just don't understand. The next morning when everyone is having breakfast, I asked Ma what endure means. I remind her by asking, what does Choti Masi have to endure? I get one tight slap, then another. But before Ma strikes me again, Mommy saves me and says, let it be, she's only a child after all. She is no child, she's a witch, says Ma, as her stomach wobbles in anger. She's always listening on the slide to elders talking. Heaven knows what will become of her. When I go into the garden, my elder sister shakes the flowers she has gathered for me. Oh, you? I've told you a hundred times not to question grown-ups, grown haven't I? If you keep on like this, one day these people will beat you so hard you will die, she said. I will ask questions. I will, I will. I answer crying. Who do I ask them then? Then go and die, says my elder sister and continues to thread a garland for Nani's Gopalji. Nani too is the same. Always shuts me up. Nani stands by her and says loudly, you are my precious Lakshmi with the intention that I should hear. In the afternoons, I tell the younger children horror stories of ghosts and demons who lived in the walnut tree. I tell them that if they should wake up at 12 o'clock on a full moon night, they would see children being bathed in blood. All the horror stories that I have read goes out like this. They would also hear the ghosts peeking through their noses, which at first is difficult to follow. The nasal sound. The children follow me all over the house like mice following the pipe pipe. Move aside, said Hari's mother, who's carrying a tray laden with glasses of tea to the room. Move. This is not for you. It's for the grown-ups. Move out of my way. Hari's mother's nose is like a frog's and her eyebrows meet above her nose. Whenever she laughs, her cheeks hang loose. Do move aside, she says, her cheeks hanging like bats. I won't, I say and try to block her way. I'll only move if you say girls are nice. All right, all right, I have said it. So now move out of the way, says Hari's mom. No, I persist. Say it properly. Oh, Hari's ma, what's happening? Asked Masi irritably from the room. Are you going to bring the tea next year or what? This Lali's middle daughter won't let me. She starts laughing, and as she does so, her frog-like nose bobs up and down. I can hear Ma naming me and saying, that girl must be harassing her. She was born only to plague my life. Someone in the room advises her that she should not get angry in her condition. For a long time, I sit outside the house watching the birds flying and wishing that I had been born a bird. Do mother birds to think their girl birds are inferior? I wonder. Then I hear a voice calling. Where has she gone? And I know someone is searching for me. I hide behind the wall where no one can ever find me. 
I wish that somewhere, anywhere, I could find that magic betel nut, which would make me invisible as soon as I put it in my mouth. What wonderful fun that would be. Where are you girls? calls Nani with a tray of crimson powder in her hands. In front of her, there is a dish of halwa and a plate filled with puris that she has prepared as offerings to the baby on Ashtami day. A mat has been spread in front of her for us to sit on. Come on, girls, let me put the tikka on your foreheads. She lights the camphor for Aarti. Come now, let me do Aarti to all of you. My two sisters and mama's beautiful daughter sit cross-legged in front of Nani. She puts a tikka on each forehead and then rings a bell, exactly like the guard on the train. After the bell rings, she blows the conch. And I'm suddenly transformed into a railway engine and race around the ledge of the courtyard. I shout, Come on, pay your fares to go to Calcutta. Ooh. In the background, I hear Nani saying, Come on, dear, let me put the tikka on you. You are my Kanya Kumari, aren't you? No, I retort. I am an engine. Mama's son claps his hands with excitement and says, Oh, an engine, an engine. Suddenly, I see Ma waddling towards me with a clenched fist and my stomach grows tight with fear. Her face is filled with rage. I'll make an engine out of you this very minute. The elderly neighbor intervenes, catches hold of Ma's hand and says, Have you gone mad, Lali? She signals to me and says, She's after all a child, a Kanya Kumari. Today is Ashtami, the De Devi's day. You mustn't hit a Kanyakumari. It is a sin. I jump down the ledge with a thud and see Nani serving the other girls halwa puri with a tightly clenched mouth. Go on, take the prasad from Nani. Why do you make your mother cry when she is in this condition? Masi asked me irritably. When you people don't love girls, why do you pretend to worship them? My voice breaks into a sob and I feel so furious with myself that I want to swallow the burning camphor and choke my treacherous throat. I want to ask why again, but don't risk it because I'm afraid I will start to cry. I don't want to cry in front of you. Hari's mother addresses the wall saying, just listen to her. What a temper for a girl to show. Nani is distributing a rupee and a quarter to each girl. I notice the mark of the crimson powder on the tip of her thumb like a blood stain. I start moving back towards the wall and screaming. I don't want all the halwa puri, tikka or money. I don't want to be a goddess. I scream so loudly that the pigeons pecking at the scattered crane in the courtyard took off in a flurry as if a bullet had been fired somewhere. What a touching story. Really? We need to think. We need to think how we treat our girls. Rather, how were they treated then? In those times, yes, Times are changing, they have changed, but at many places, they still haven't. The story makes us really sit up and think. I'm sure you love the story. Please like, share, subscribe, and press the bell icon so as to be connected to our channel with all the updates. Thank you so much for listening to the story. Thank you. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Stay happy till I come back again with another story to narrate to you.